नमो विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ट्रांसलेशन द ब्राह्मण जड भरत सेड माई डियर किंग ऑल दो यू आर नॉट एट ऑल एक्सपीरियंस्ड यू आर ट्राइंग टू स्पीक लाइक अ वेरी एक्सपीरियंस मैन कॉन्सिक्वेंटली यू कैन नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड एन एक्सपीरियंस पर्सन एन एक्सपीरियंस पर्सन डज नॉट स्पीक द वे यू आर स्पीकिंग अबाउट द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन अ मास्टर एंड अ सर्वेंट or about material pains and pleasures these are simply external activities any advanced experienced man considering the absolute truth does not talk in this way the context here is that jad bharat after understanding sorry maharaj raugan after understanding jad bharat is a very great personality he started speaking a lot of philosophy justifying himself of whatever chastisement he gave for jad bharat and now this great personality jad bharat is speaking he spoke before also but he spoke mildly some philosophy to make maharaj raghavan realize that i am not a conditioned soul like you i am a liberated soul but in this chapter 5th canto 11th chapter jad bharat is going to speak the philosophy of krishna consciousness to make Ra- maharaj raghavan realize that what is important in life and how one can actually become a nice devotee so this is the first verse that we're discussing today so he says a kovidah kovida vada vadan vadasi you are speaking like a kovida like a very intelligent experienced person but you are actually a kovida you are not very experienced you are not very intelligent atah na ati vidam and therefore you cannot be considered as a very experienced or intelligent person because your speech is not compatible and then he says varishtah na surayah hi vyavaharam and propad translates this with more elaboration so propad's tra- purport is also there in the translation so propad is saying that an experienced person does not speak the way you are speaking about what vyavaharam mundane and social behavior that is a relationship between master and a servant or material pains and pleasures and then enam avamarshena sah amnati amnanti tatva any advanced okay so these are simply external activities any advanced experienced man considering the absolute truth that is tatva does not talk in this way so basically Jad Bharat is telling Maharaj Rahugan you are a fool don't speak you are not experienced you are not intelligent you are a kovida don't speak and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur quotes the shloka from the 10th chapter shloka number 22 where Jad Bharat or Maharaj Rahugan he very philosophically spoke a lot of things about body and soul with analogy he says that when the pot is kept on the fire and the pot has milk and the rice so maharaj raghavan said the fire will heat the pot first milk will get heated and then by that the rice will get boiled or cooked now in this jad bharat is calling him as a kovida this is not proper why because everything here is material and all the three are material fire pot milk and uh, rice and this he compared to what the body and soul he said anything that happens to the body should also affect the soul the way the heat from the fire is affecting the milk and the rice but one thing we have to understand is there all those three four items which are described fire pot milk and rice they are material but when it comes to the comparison of body and soul body is material but soul is not so this analogy this comparison is not proper a kovidah 
and then Vishwanath Chakradeep Thakur very nicely elaborates and he says that for a conditioned soul since he is materially covered he might feel or experience the pain what the body is feeling but a liberated person like Jada Bharat he will not feel the pain because he is liberated he is detached from the body he is above bodily conception of life so in this way we understand that how Maharaj Rahugan gave nice analogy he gave nice explanation also maybe if we would have present in place of Jada Bharat we would have clapped also such a nice analogy what an explanation but Jada Bharat is not appreciating he is like you are not a pandit and Arjun also such wonderful arguments he gave in our Gita course when he present the four arguments that Arjun gave for not fighting people are like yeah it is so wonderful actually he shouldn't have fought why Krishna made him fight but then Krishna calls him no, you are not a very learned person second chapter shloka 11 asochan anvasochastvam pragya vadhamsha bhasha se gata soon agata somscha nanu sochanti pandita you're speaking like a learned man or arjun Prabhupada in the translation uh, purport he says you're speaking like a learned man or arjun but you're actually a fool krishna is saying why because you don't know the basic difference between body and soul for you, you are considering the soul is also like the body, but for your information, soul is permanent, body is not. So you are not a pandit. You are not a pandit because you are lamenting for something that is temporary, that is body. Now it's a very important question and a deliberation that we need to have is, who is actually a pandit? See, Bhagavad Gita describes everything. The only thing is we have to understand it and go deeper and see where we can apply that in our day-to-day -day life. 5th chapter, 18th shloka, where Krishna is very beautifully describing who is a Pandit. Vidya vinaya sampanne brahmani gavi hastini shuni chaiva svapakecha pandita samadarshinah. Who is a Pandit? Pandit is the one who is a realized soul, who has got higher realization, who is able to see Paramatma in everyone. In this world, people speak such big, big things. In 12th canto, 2nd chapter, symptoms of Kali Yuga are given. In that one of the shloka, it says, Panditye Chapalam Vachah. Means in the age of Kali, who will be considered as Pandit? Chapalam Vachah. The one who can speak nicely with word jugglery. You see, many times people would, many times you will hear this outside people speaking so much about this. We should see everyone on an equal vision. Sakko ek saman dekhna chahiye. Everyone is a spirit soul. Sometimes people speak this also. Bhakti dil mein honi chahiye. Dil saaf rakho. Bhakti to andhroni baat hai. So many times people will speak many things, but how much they actually mean it? This is just panditye chapalam vachah. This is just chapalam vachah. This speech that is there is just word jugglery. And when there is word jugglery like this, people appreciate in the age of Kali. Oh, such nice words. Such nice words. But here Krishna is very clear. Who is actually a Pandit? Pandit is the one who is a realized soul, who has got higher realization by practicing devotional service very intensely, deep. Now it might happen in our devotee association <clears throat> that when we are there together, we might speak big, big things. We might hear from this speaker, that speaker, and you know, in our discussions we might you know, speak big, big things. And then devotees might appreciate also, oh, such a learned person he is, such a realized soul he is. Hmm. There's one part. Another part is, we might speak in such a way, which is very pleasing to devotees. Hmm. We might, because some devotees might like, you know, when you start uh, speaking ill about someone else, they will like, oh, this devotee is so nice. Now. Uh, we have a nice compatibility with each other. You know? So we sit together and we talk nicely. Hmm. So we might be called as a learned or a pandit in the association. Or a group of devotees might call, might call us, oh, he's such a nice devotee, he's a very nice friend of mine, our bandwidth match, our frequency matches. But one thing we have to understand is, the tag that the devotees give around is not very important. Mm -hmm. They might call us as pandit, but we might be a kovida, we might be not very intelligent, if 
our speech is not helping us to advance in Krishna consciousness. So if the speech is such that it is deteriorating our consciousness, it is pulling us away from Krishna. Even if others might say he is Kovida, but actually we will be a Kovida, not very intelligent, not very experienced. Therefore, it's very, very important that a practicing devotee, a sadhaka, focuses on what the sadhaka is speaking. Therefore, one has to control the speech to advance in devotional service. See, if speech was not that important, why will Rupa Goswami in Upadesh Amrit twice speak about speech? Shloka number one, Upadesh Amrit. Vacho vegam manasa krodha vegam, jivha vegam udaropasta vegam, etan vegan yo vishaheta dhiraha, sarvam apimam prutvim sashishyat. First word, vacho vegam, the first urge. Rupa Goswami could have put anything. He could have put uh, udaropasta vegam first. And he's saying, Vacho Vegam. He talks about that first. Vacho Vegam. Urge to speak. Shloka number two of Nectar of Instruction. Again, he repeats the same. So here, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his uh, Bhaktiya Lok, when he's commenting on these two shlokas, he says that first he just puts a conditional statement. Vacho Vegam. One has to control one's speech. But then in the next shloka, Rupa Goswami highlights it more. And he says, Atyahara Prayasascha. Prajalpo Niyamagraha Janasangascha Laulyamcha Shadabhir Bhakti Vinashyati. So these six items will destroy one's bhakti. And out of that, Atyahara, Prayasa, and third he says, Prajalpaha. Useless talking. Prajalpaha. Now see, Rupa Goswami is giving so much importance to talk. First he says, Vacho Vegam. And second he says, Prajalpa. Therefore, it's very important that a sadhaka focuses on what the sadhaka speaks. So, if the speech is not controlled, then what will happen? We will not advance in devotional service for sure. We will deteriorate in our consciousness. We will deteriorate you know, in our uh, relationship with other devotees and relationship with Krishna as a whole. So, in Bhaktiya Lok, which is a book written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he has written various articles and one of the articles is on Prajalpa. So it's very important to understand what is Prajalpa. Then we'll be able to understand that how we can actually control one's speech. Now, Jalpana or Prajalpa basically means talking with each other. That is Jalpana or Prajalpa. Any talk it can be. But since we naturally talk nonsense, so Prajalpa naturally means nonsensical talk. <laughs> So I was very astonished to see the definition of Prajalpa. Prajalpa means any talk. But that talk which is useless in the association of devotees, we call it as Prajalpa. Mm -hmm. So since naturally we talk nonsense, so Prajalpa. Mm -hmm. And in this, uh, in this entire article, one thing that I could trace was that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying that Prajalpa which is favorable is acceptable. A devotee, a sadhaka can accept. But that talk or that prajalpa, which is unfavorable for bhakti to get closer to Krishna, that is something that is not acceptable. We cannot accept that prajalpa. And then he lists down various sorts of prajalpas. First he says useless talks. Second, arguments. Third, gossip. Fourth, debate. Fifth, fault finding in others. Sixth, speaking falsehoods. Seventh, blaspheming devotees. And eighth, worldly talks. These are the eight things that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is listing. Which is basically our talk. These eight things comprises of our talk. If you see all the elements, yes, I have listed it here. First, he speaks about reading. So many times, even devotees, even sadhakas are involved in reading in newspapers and novels. Even Prabhupada talks about this so much. We call it as news. What is new in that? It's all olds only. The same activity is happening, only names change. This crime, that crime, only the victim changes and the person you know, who is, uh, what do you call it as? Who is affecting or is a criminal will change. Otherwise, the activity is same. The worldly talk is same. But then Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, but if the newspaper is talking about a pure devotee, then you can read if the novel is talking about a personality like Puranjan 
and the description leads to advancement in devotional service, then it's okay. This Puranjan story was an allegorical story in fourth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, which Narada Muni is speaking to Prachina Barhi. What was the end result of uh, Puranjan's entire pastime description? What happened to Prachina Barhi? He went on to a higher journey of spiritual life. Hmm. He became more intense in his spiritual life. So, if that is leading to something, means the reading of ours is leading to intensification of devotional service, then okay. Hmm. But in general, in the age of Kali, newspapers, novels, or other books like that, written by mundane authors, even if it speaks about Krishna, if it is taking us away from Krishna, away from Dharma, then one has to just avoid that. There is no option. Hmm. Because we are sadhakas, we are not siddhas. Siddhas can analyze and say, okay, from this paragraph, I take these two words for my Krishna consciousness. But sadhakas, I'll reject these two words and take the rest of it because the rest of it is very nice. <laughs> Next thing that Bhakti Thakur speaks about is argument. He says, that if the arguments are not based on Vedic scriptures, it is a waste of time. If the arguments are not based on Vedic scriptures, it is a waste of time. And Bhakti Thakur's analysis says that the useless arguments arise from what? Envy or pride. Well, whenever we are arguing, we have to analyze. Now, how is it, where is it arising from? Envy or pride? Or it can be aversion to something or attachment to something means that thing which I don't like because it does not help me in sense gratification. That thing which I like which helps me in sense gratification and someone is speaking against that, we start arguing with that person. Or that argument which arises from foolishness or false pride. Here Bhakti Nath Thakur is saying it's useless, it's of no use. And many times Quarrel some people who like to quarrel just like that. And in the age of Kali, the word Kali itself comes the word Kalaha. Kalaha means what to argue. Hmm. Now, so when this uh, Kalaha or Kali is but obvious, comprised of many, many, many quarrelsome people in this world. And they feel very, they become intoxicated. Hmm. Bhakti Thakur is using the word intoxicated by false arguments. People like it. There's a different rasa in argument. There is a different rasa to prove one's own self. Therefore, Bhakti Nath Thakur is saying this is all stupidity. Mm -hmm. But then what is good? When is the argument good? When the deliberation is based on the Vedas, on the Vedic scriptures, and we are trying to understand what is good and what is bad. So when there is an argument going on, based on the Vedic scriptures, both the sides are trying to establish what is good and what is bad. That is something that is productive, that is no longer the prajalpa aspect that is there. So that is okay, acceptable. And also those arguments and discussions which are there, which are leading to establishing our relationship with Krishna or Krishna's supremacy or the abominable nature of this material world, that's favorable. That's not prajalpa anymore. So in this way, arguments are not very much entertained by Bhakti Thakur here. Those arguments... First, which are not based on Vedic scriptures and second, which are not taking us closer to Krishna or closer to the truth that Krishna is supreme, we are his part and parcel, we are meant to serve him. Those arguments are useless. Previously, when the arguments would happen, it would be Tattva Vichar, Shastra Vichar, where two parties would come together. Say the Shankarites and the Madhavites will come together. And in the great sabha, they will start arguing. They will quote shloka, one shloka, and from the other side, there is another shloka. That was actually argument. Hmm. Now the argument that is there, even amongst the devotees, what will be the argument? No, this is not good for my sense gratification. No, this is good for my sense gratification. No, this I cannot accept. No, this I will accept. This is the way what the arguments happen no, now in the age of Kali. Now, especially now in this century, where people consider themselves as Kovidaha, but actually a Kovida, useless, nonsense, don't have any knowledge from Shastra. Uneducated, oh sorry, educated fools, this is what we can say, hmm. arguments. 
Now, third thing that Bhakti Vinod Thakur is highlighting is talking about others. The rasa that people get in this world, mouth waters when we hear about other people or when we start speaking about others. A lot of rasa, a lot of taste is there for that. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur is hammering at this point and he says, talking about other people without reason. I repeat. Talking about other people without reason is, he doesn't say adverse to devotional service. He says extremely adverse to devotional service. Extremely adverse. Mm -hmm. And why people talk about others? He gives two reasons for that. He says, one is to establish one's own reputation by undermining someone. Oh, I am better than that person. And then we start undermining that person and start speaking ill about the person. Second, out of envy. Because we start feeling that, okay, he's going much ahead than me. I should pull his reputation down. I should pull that devotee down. This is called as being envious and then speaking about others. Which will affect one's consciousness very, very adversely. And again, I repeat. Bhakti Vinod Thakur is not just saying adverse, he's saying extremely adverse to devotional service. Mm -hmm. Now there are two types of practicing devotees. Renunciants and householders. Grihatyagis, that is Brahmacharis, Vanaprasthas and Sanyasis. And the second category is Grihasthas. Now when it comes to Grihatyagis, they have nothing to do with others. So there is no question of speaking about others. And when it comes to householders, grahasthas, they might have to speak about others because they are engaged in earning, saving, protecting, maintaining the family. So completely giving up the talk about others is very difficult. But renunciants have to do that. Grahatyagis have to do that. Now what about grahasthas? Should they continue speaking about others just like that? No. Uselessly speaking about others have to be reduced very much. And one has to see as much as possible, the talk that we are having about others should be favorable for my Krishna consciousness or at least should be favorable for other person's Krishna consciousness who is hearing. Very, very important. Hmm. But now, even as renunciants, we might have to speak about others. So, Bhakti Nath Thakur, he highlights. He says that when the Guru enlightens the disciple on some topic, then maybe to give examples or to correct the disciple, he has to speak about others. If we see in Prabhupada Lilamrath, Prabhupada would chastise, sometimes uh, paint black his different god brothers to tell the disciples, don't associate with them. Why? Because at that time, Prabhupada wanted to protect the disciples. That was the only thing that was there. Because this becomes very vivid when Prabhupada is giving, living this body, living this world, it becomes very vivid the way he was talking to his God brothers. So when his God brothers came to meet in Vrindavan, this was in 1977, December, uh, sorry, November. So in the initial few days, just before when Prabhupada is leaving the body, so when the God brothers were coming to meet, to meet and talk with Srila Prabhupada, the first thing that Srila Prabhupada was telling them is, please forgive me, I spoke many times ill about you, but my only intention was to protect my disciples. See? So the Guru, whenever he is speaking ill also about someone, he is speaking in the way that it is a service to his disciples. This is something that is very important, you know, to note. And then, to clarify, you know, some of uh, the various concepts that a person should know, so maybe a person, like an elevated soul, might speak about others, like Shukadeva Goswami. So Shukadeva Goswami is speaking so many things in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And, more, and many of the times, Shukadeva Goswami is just blasting and pulling the materialist down. Now that is very important to establish the right thing that has to be done by the sadhakas. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is undermining, he is condemning the materialist like anything. So that the renunciants know, the devotees in general know, that what should be the standard of a devotee's thought process. Hmm. So in this way, a person might speak about others, 
but that discussion which is there should help us to understand okay this is improper so i should be avoiding that that is not good so i should not be getting closer to that so if you are speaking ill also if you are speaking about others also it should help the person to get closer to krishna so that's what is the main point you know that bhaktuno thakur is trying to highlight but again when he is concluding this particular section he says those who talk about others while influenced by devotional impediments like envy hatred pride distinction are offenders at the feet of bhakti devi so say we are talking about others out of these four envy i am envious of someone so i want to put that person down so i am speaking about that person that devotee second hatred i don't like that devotee at all so i start speaking ill about that person third out of pride is called as madha andha when the person becomes proud he becomes andha he becomes blind for him anyone and everyone is lower than him superiority complex and start speaking ill about the other ill, ill about others distinction that is you know i am great yes to get to that position you know when we undermine others position all this bhakti no thakur is calling as offenders at the feet of bhakti devi it's a very big word i don't know if you are able to comprehend what bhakti no thakur is saying first he said speaking about other people without any reason is extremely adverse to devotional service and now when he is ending this section of talking about others he is saying that such talks are offense at the feet of bhakti devi very big thing next bhakti no talk thakur talks about debates so when the debates arises from the desire for conquest to win over to prove one superiority bhakti no thakur is saying it's extremely abominable he said extremely abominable fault finding he talks about fault finding and he says fault finding arises only from imposing one's own bad habits on others i repeat if you are awake you will be able to understand he says fault finding arises only from imposing one's own bad habits on others so whatever anarthas we have that's what we'll be able to find in others simple in simple terms because if we are very nicely in one of the lectures i was hearing by one of the proper disciples so he is saying that what we see in other people is just our mirror image like say for example that uh, i have not tasted drugs any time so when the drugs is kept in front of me so i'll say why someone has kept salt here why someone has kept uh, maybe white cement or you know something like that but the one who knows the drugs one who has tasted the drugs one who is addicted to it just by looking at it his mouth will water he will be pulled towards that right so similarly when i am seeing some fault in others it means one thing is very clear mere mein bhi wo fault hai it is there in me also therefore i am able to see in others very nicely therefore he is uh, bhaktino thakur in very nice vocabulary he is saying it arises only from imposing one's own bad habits on others extremely abominable and then he talks about blasphemy blaspheming sadhus and bhakti no thakur he says that blaspheming sadhus is source of great inauspiciousness and he is writing a very important thing that every sadhaka should do he says that every sadhaka who wants to attain lord hari lord krishna then he should make a vow like this bhakti no thakur our acharya is suggesting all of us that what vow we should take and he is writing in this life i will never blaspheme sadhus this is a vow that every sadhaka is supposed to take in this life i will never blaspheme sadhus this is the vow that bhakti no thakur wants us to take and who are sadhus all devotees <laughs> all devotees are sadhus 
a nice example that comes in Srimad Bhagavatam about blasphemy of sadhu. And what happened to the person who blasphemed the sadhu? In third canto, the Daksha is blaspheming Lord Shiva. Ignorance openly is blaspheming. Your eyes are like monkey. Why I gave my daughter to you? And looking at Brahma, because of this person, because my father told, so I gave my no, daughter to you. And things like that. He goes on speaking. A lot of other bad things he speaks. Ill about him. And what happens after that? He was completely destroyed. Completely destroyed. So blaspheming, Vaishnavas, blaspheming sadhus, is very, very detrimental in to our devotional service. So one has to be very careful. Therefore, if that was not the case, why will Bhakti Nur Thakur ask us to take a vow like this? In this life, I will never blaspheme a sadhu. Very big thing. In fact, uh, if as of now, if we analyze our uh, current situation, in this life, the only thing that I will do is blaspheme sadhus. That's what we have been doing. Mm -hmm. But it's a very big thing. And you know what? Who will be able to implement all this, what Bhakti Nur Thakur is speaking? Only those devotees who want to attain Krishna. Those devotees who want to enjoy in this world, Murkhas, yes, not Kovida, a Kovidas, they are the ones who will not be able to implement this. This is what is the rasa of my life. This is what is the rasa of my life. How can I not get into this? Yesterday we were reading in Brahmachari class, Nectar of Instruction, verse 1. I'll just try to refresh all the points that we discussed. So Prabhupada, in the purport to Nectar of Instruction, verse 1, he says, Talking of materialistic men and impersonalist Mayavadi philosophers may be compared to the croaking of frogs. Okay. So now we have to see and analyze that materialistic men in ourself and that Mayavadi in ourself. Okay. And how will we get to know the materialistic men in ourself and Mayavadi in ourself by our speech? So what are the different things that a materialist will speak? A materialist is very engrossed in speaking about Bollywood, this celebrity, that celebrity, speaking about cricket, speaking about politics. So this is how a materialistic man will behave. And say a devotee also gets into all these different talks and gone, is a gone case. And all the past anarthas that we have, you see when the materialistic people come together, their talks will be very nice polished Bollywood dialogues, Hollywood dialogues. We are in South India, Tollywood dialogues. Hmm. So, a devotee when he is speaking dialogues from the movies, sitting on the Vyasasan, or even you know, while uh, conversing with other devotees, one has to understand it's a materialistic talk. And it is like croaking of a frog that is taking us closer to death. And this has to be very clear. So, one has to be very, very careful that, okay, we might have anarthas of the past, and as soon as some situation comes, you know, we might get that urge to speak the dialogue in the same way that celebrity might have spoken in the movie, with all the gestures and expressions possible. But we should tell ourselves, I am a sadhaka, I am a devotee now, I should avoid all this. I shouldn't contaminate others. Let the contamination be here, let it not come here. No. Unnecessary speaking. Materialistic men means what? Unnecessary speech. You see, in the office and other places, I still remember during my office days, uh, useless, there is no context at all, some speech from here and there. And what will be that? Taunting someone or pulling someone's leg. Oh, bichara shanti se bat ke apna khana khara and then the other person. Why are you so quiet? Looks like you have this problem, looks like you have that problem. Are you shanti se khara khane do? No, no, pulling leg of others. Sarcastical speech, hyping up things, artificially glorifying others. If such things are there in the association of devotees also, then this is basically that materialistic man within us. Hmm. Unnecessary taunting someone. Abhi, you have nothing to do with that devotee. The devotee is just there doing his activity, just going and taunting. What is the need of all this? Pulling someone's leg. Now someone is doing nice devotional service. Going and pulling the devotee's leg. By cracking some joke or this or that. Not correct. Not, not correct at all. And when it comes to sarcastical speech. 
Now that somewhat shows our enviousness towards the devotee. Look at him, such a big devotee he has become. Look at that person. Acting, uh, acting, वगैरह नहीं बोलेंगे तभी glorify करते तो you know, our speech is polished at that time. Yes. Look at that. Look at him. He's become completely purified in last one hour. You know, in last one day, he has got all the twenty-six Vaishnava qualities in himself. Now these are different ways of sarcasm. You know where it shows our enviousness towards that devotee, or it shows our hatred towards that devotee. we have discussed fault finding and blaspheming but in the association devotees materialists is something they will do all this criticizing and all this very natural for them same thing when we are doing in the association of devotees we have to be very very careful and we have to understand one thing very clearly that we are just getting closer and closer and closer to death and not closer to krishna when we are doing all this hmm? another very important thing when we are in the when it comes to materialist one of the nice qualities that a materialist has is justifying oneself galti karenge but then justifying oneself no i didn't do it even if i did it was correct even if i did and you might say it wrong but actually it is correct we justify that very nicely so it's a very important thing as devotees say you know we are uh, we know that we have done some mistake Or if some other superior is saying you have done a mistake, it has to be accepted and corrected, not justifying, saying no, no, what I did was correct. Why it was correct? These, these are the different points which are there. <laughs> justifying oneself. Materialistic men are very great in glorifying themselves. I don't know if you have observed that. And same quality when devotees show in the devotee circle, then what is the difference between a materialistic man and a devotee? a devotee he always condemns himself always he condemns saying that what sort of person i am what sort of devotee i am look at uh, our uh, krishnadas kaviraj goswami he is glorifying himself in uh, chaitanya charitamrit you know he says purushera kita hoita muite lagishta he is saying that i am much condemned than a worm in the stool and then he also says that i am much fallen than jagai and madhai and then when it comes to sadakas neophytes filled with anarthas we are like glorifying ourselves yes sanak sanat and all those are okay but my name is missing there <laughs> yes <laughs> these acharyas are okay i also have some qualities of these acharyas what's so great about that what's so great about that i am getting many many examples of many many devotees but i don't want to speak <laughs> so glorifying oneself so one has to be very very careful it is described glorifying oneself even if it is very very much a fact about oneself still in shastra it is considered as suicide one will get the sin of committing suicide when we glorifying ourselves even if it's a fact even if it's a fact hmm and then yesterday we were discussing about this is a bit high level but still if we get implemented it is good natural enjoying tendency is there in all of us and the same enjoying tendency is seen in devotional service so at least in speech we should uh, modify ourselves as maza aa gaya prasad kha ke as maza aa gaya lecture mein as maza you know us dham mein ja ke maza aa gaya so these words you know somehow it has to be modified internally internals might not change so quickly but externally at least the speech should change it was spiritually very nourishing the class was spiritually very nourishing so this is the modified version of maza aa gaya so this can be there which might help <laughs> that dham yatra was spiritually very nourishing something like that so materialistic men might speak about all these different things you know which i just listed down but we shouldn't get that in the association of devotees we should avoid as much as possible when it comes to mayavadi prabhupada is speaking about impersonalist mayavadi philosophers what do you mean by that a devotee who calls himself as follower of chaitanya mahaprabhu becoming a mayavadi what does that mean it means we are giving an ordinary person a position of 
सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड और द अदर वे यू पुल द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड टू द ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन लेवल लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन वी आर ग्लोरीफाइंग यू नो समोटी ऑन हिस्स बर्थडे we we start uh, if suppose you know we start speaking like this साक्षात सुखदेव गोस्वामी सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस वेन ही स्पीक्स वर्सेस आई फील लाइक सुखदेव गोस्वामी स्पीकिंग वर्सेस अरे इट्स इट्स माई वाद यस हाउ कैन यू पुट अ साधक ऑन द लेवल ऑफ सुखदेव गोस्वामी वेन एवर आई लुक एट हिम आई फील लाइक प्रोपा द सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ मी दिस माई वाद वेर यू इक्वेट एन ऑर्डिनरी पर्सन to a great personality sakshat bhagwan krishna dikhte hai mujhe aap mein now these things are outside people do say when they look at us but that's my vat no one has to be very clear and my and personalist my adik no speech will just take us closer to krishna and not, sorry places closer to death not to krishna for sure another very important thing pulling the lord down pulling the personality down to our level and the example of that which people sitting on the vyasas and should take care when we are describing the leelas of the lord we have to very very careful that we don't mundaneize that leela don't put that leela down to mundane level especially when we speak about radha and krishna mm-hmm. so the relationship between shri shri radha and shri krishna that's very divine and then when we are describing that leela mm-hmm. in a way that portrays just a boyfriend a girlfriend's past time sorry time pass hmm. then that's very very abominable and it's very offensive yes so shrimati radharani looked at krishna and krishna was blushing and krishna looked at radharani radharani was blushing and uh, people sitting there you know girl and boy in the class looking at each other and blushing <laughs> yes see what happens is when the speaker is speaking a bhagavatam speaker is speaking the speaker has to be very clear that he is supposed to convey the supremacy of these personalities and not you now pull them down to a mundane platform to such an extent that people of this world start seeing them on the mundane platform then it was not a service but it was a disservice for sure because that speech that krishna katha didn't take the audience closer to krishna but took the audience away from krishna this is my word where you pull the lord on to the pr- platform of the mundane people of this world hmm. so in this way these are different things outside people might glorify govinda but he is a govinda because he is not getting closer to krishna by his speech so solution that bhakti vinod thakur gives in bhakti alok in this particular article of prajalpa very heavy but still i can now hear in order to pass one's life without sin in order to pass one's life without sin one should not speak anything more than whatever little is necessary so one has to speak how much ever is needed not more than what is needed one need discuss only whatever is auspicious for oneself and others See, only a very intense devotee, you know, will be very careful about his speech, because he is eager to get closer to Krishna. He wants to attain Krishna Prem this life, so he will be very, very clear that I will speak only what will help me to get closer to Krishna, and I will speak whatever will help others to get closer to Krishna. I don't want to speak anything apart from that. Mm-hmm. Another thing that he says: useless talk is extremely detrimental. How many times Bhakti Nath Thakur is using this word? extremely detrimental practicing devotee should discuss topics of lord hari in the association of other devotees and remember hari's name form qualities and past times without uselessly wasting time so when devotees come together what will actually nourish the devotees what will nourish the entire community because we see there are a lot of examples now that because of such useless talks because of gossips there are relationship you know which are getting uh, you know strained between devotees there is bitterness that creeps in in the community of devotees when there are these useless talks that comes into picture 
So when devotees come together, what they are supposed to do? Krishna is telling this in Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, Shloka number 9. Machitta madgata prana bodayantaha parasparam kathayantascha maam nityam tushanti cha ramanti cha. What will actually nourish the devotee? And what will nourish the entire community? Machitta madgata prana bodayantaha parasparam kathayantascha maam. He is saying my katha is discussed when devotees come together. They don't discuss anything else. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was giving instruction to Raghunath Das Goswami, he was saying, Gramya Vartana Shunibara, Gramya Vartana Koribe. Don't hear materialistic talk, useless talk, and don't speak materialistic, useless talks. Now, in the association of devotees, now we might say, Prabhuji, I didn't speak, I only heard. Sorry, boss. You are also part of Prajalpa then. Because you heard. You heard. What do you mean by heard? You heard which helped the other devotee to speak more. If you would have not heard, he would have stopped. Simple. Yes. So we cannot act innocent. I am not I not The other devotee was speaking. No. You should have ended the talk by saying, I cannot hear this. Or it is not good for our spiritual progress. If we are hearing, it means we are saying, yeah, bhaiya, aage kaho aar. Please speak more. Please speak more. I want to hear. Hmm? And internally, I think, Nini prajalpa to karna nahi, abhi itna class ne suna. But I think hearing is okay. No, hearing is also not okay. Because hearing, the next thing that happens after shravanam is kirtanam. Yes. So shravanam, next is kirtanam. So more you do shravanam of these nonsense things, the next will happen is nonsensical kirtan. Therefore, it's very, very important that when we devotees come together, now we have to be kovida, we have to be intelligent to understand what to speak and what will actually take me closer to Krishna. Therefore, our Acharya is saying, controlled speech is very important for advancement of a devotee. So, I pause here. Thank you very much. Grantra Shrimad Bhagavatam ki. Jagadguru Srila Prabhupada ki.